Question number two for the audience. Are there any deal breakers in relationships when it comes to doctrinal disagreements? So has there ever been a time where you and somebody else got to the point where you disagreed so bad that you were like, nah, that's a deal breaker? <laughs> uh, and you can answer that, Los. All right. Um, see, I'm trying to think of what that looks like or what has that looked like for me. Um if I, if I've interacted with one of Pentecostals, for instance. Yeah. You know. And what I mean by deal breaker, I mean deal breaker in close fellowship, where you right. just were like, all right, now I gotta separate, and it gotta be intentional separation. Right. Yeah. So for me, uh, it's with leaders of churches that, you know, have undermined an essential doctrine. Okay. You know, like the Trinity. You know, um, so like one is Pentecostals. I, I had a couple friends that were oneness and I could no longer affiliate or even associate, you know, with someone like that. Now, if we saw each other at a cafe, we say what's up to each other, whatever. It's all love. But, you know, there's that understood distance, you know, and it goes back to that definition. I don't know if we gave them the definition to what we were talking about as far as distance, right? Yeah, go ahead. It'd be a good time to give them the definition. Yeah, so um, when I say distance, I mean distance uh, that's necessary or understood that, uh, uh, let me read it this way. Distance is the necessary or understood relational space created between you and others. Okay, right. Gotcha. So that's what I mean. Like it's understood, at least on my end, that, I need distance from this person because their belief undermines an essential doctrine in the Christian faith. Right. So to me, that's a deal breaker. When you believe something and are preaching and teaching something that undermines fully uh, something that's essential in our faith, then there has to be distance. Mm -hmm. um, there can't be association or affiliation. Um, now, in passing, I could say, what's up? You know, mad love, uh, whatever. We can even sit down and try to chop it up so I can try to convince them that they're wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I think um, that for me is a deal breaker when it undermines an essential doctrine. That that for me is what uh, what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there's this. I think there's been a deal breaker where a person just like blatantly would say, I just don't. Let me say it this right. I just don't believe that the Bible has the truth, the absolute truth in it. And then at that point, I'm like, well, I can't even fellowship with you closely at this point hmm. because our whole worldview is is totally different from each other. So um, not that I'm going to stop being your friend. Right. <clears throat> but, yeah, there's certain lines of separation when you start um, even when you start getting into the Bible is man-made and it's so much paganism mixed into it or it's just you know a con I, I can deal with the contradictions when a person says it contradicts itself because we could talk that one out yeah but when you just blatantly say nah it's not the word of god and matter of fact it's definitely man-made and it, it has no inspiration and when you just start just saying that type of stuff i'm like all right we might have to separate just a little bit yeah for me like my my best friend you know uh jay uh, we're close. We're like brothers. Yeah. But he he went to Bible college to be to study Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> Got his Bible degree, but he became agnostic. Right. And uh, <clears throat> there was a point in our relationship where it got tense, you know, and I, I was wavering on where is this going to go? Mm -hmm. And there had to be an understanding, mm -hmm. you know, that we're brothers, with, you know, as far as, you know, the image of God and, and things like that. For sure. I, I love him. Um, and there's not distance because there's a respect. Right. And he's not out teaching, you know, against Christ or anything. That's just where he's at personally. Mm -hmm. So for me, someone who's teaching and promoting a false gospel is definitely far more dangerous than an honest atheist. Right. Who's personal with his atheism. I got gotcha. you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, because the scriptures, the New Testament tell us those are the ones we need to look out for. The ones who are teaching, the, you know, opposite, contrary mm. to the doctrine that was being taught. Right. So that's different than someone who's personally struggling with these issues. Yeah. Um, so that I think that's helpful for people because you don't want to cut people off who disagree uh, 
unless they're you know uh like i said uh intentionally deceiving people right 